SCP-1983 Object Class Keter, Presumed Neutralized Special Containment Procedures Outpost 54 had been built on the land surrounding SCP-1983 in disguise as a chemical plant. The plant building serves as a barracks for Mobile Task Force Chi-13, the Choir Boys. All entry points in Outpost 54 be guarded at all times. Personnel will review Document 1983-12, which details the cover story to be given to any civilians expressing curiosity. All Mobile Task Force personnel must profess strong religious beliefs per Chi-13 protocols. All ammunition stock must have a silver or silver tip projectile. A 24-hour watch is to be maintained on the front door of SCP-1983-1. Guards are to engage any instances of SCP-1983-2 on site. No personnel is to approach within 5 meters of SCP-1983-1 outside of scheduled testing protocols. Update. Following the event 1983-23, a stand-down of Outpost 54 had been authorized. A skeleton crew will remain to monitor SCP-1983 for any further activity. Arms intended for use against instances of SCP-1983-2 are to be maintained at Outpost 54 Armory. Description: SCP-1983-1 is a one-story farmhouse in <laughs> County Wyoming. It was abandoned in 1968 after a series of ritual murders, allegedly performed by a satanic cult. Please see capture logs for SCP <laughs> for further details. The front door of SCP-1983-1, when opened, appears to contain a spatial anomaly. Neither material nor light has been observed to exit the doorway, save for instances of SCP-1983-2, though the anomaly is exothermic. SCP-1983-1 is accessible through other entrances, including windows, the back door, and entrances cut into the back of SCP-1983-1. However, the front room does not appear to exist inside of SCP-1983-1. Doors that should lead to the front room instead lead to other doors inside the building. Measurements of the inside and outside of SCP-1983-1 are inconsistent. Holes cut through the interior walls of SCP-1983-1 that should lead to the front room lead instead to the outside walls around the front of SCP-1983-1 but stop ten feet on either side of the doorway. Attempts to drill into the front room of SCP-1983-1 from the outside led to the exposure of smaller portions of the anomaly, though instances of SCP-1983-2 had not been observed to exit them. Further attempts to breach the wall have been forbidden by O5-03, due to the possibility of allowing increased potential for instances of SCP-1983-2 to appear. SCP-1983-2 are bipedal creatures approximately 1.8 meters tall. They are vaguely humanoid and entirely black in color. They are highly aggressive and engage any human on sight. When an instance of SCP-1983-2 comes in contact with a human, they extend an upper limb into the human's chest cavity without any apparent damage to skin or tissues. Through unknown means, they then extract the heart, killing the human. Once it has acquired a human heart, an instance of SCP-1983-2 will return to SCP-1983-1. Silver munitions fired while offering prayers is the only known method of killing SCP-1983-2. The precise form of the prayer or religion of the supplicant does not appear to matter so long as the prayer is sincere. Once killed, the bodies of SCP-1983-2 appear to evaporate, leaving a small layer of sulfur. SCP-1983 was discovered after a series of mysterious deaths in the vicinity of <laughs> County. Foundation investigators encountered instances of SCP-1983-2 and were able to trace them back to SCP-1983-1. Addendum 1. A team from Mobile Task Force Chi-13 was sent through the front doorway to attempt to investigate the anomaly. They did not return. However, shortly after they entered, the front door appeared, closing in the frame. No further manifestations of SCP-1983-2 appeared. Addendum 2. A second assault team entered SCP-1983-1 to determine the fate of the first assault team. They did not return. The door did not close. Shortly after, new manifestations of SCP-1983-2 appeared. Agent Morris entered the doorway, which closed shortly after. Addendum 3 On May 23, 1989, D-14134 was given a closed-circuit camera tethered to a monitor by a 25-meter cord. He was instructed to examine as much of the area as he could, and then attempt to return. Once through the doorway, feet from the camera were interrupted. The cord was pulled taut, and then snapped. Several hours afterward, the anomaly in SCP-1983-1 disappeared. Inside, the desiccated remains of several agents were discovered, as well as document 1983-15, an informal SCP report written by an agent within the anomaly. It appears as follows. Item number pending. Object Class Keter, God help you. Special Containment Procedures, you're going to die, you poor dumb fuck. This isn't a threat. I'm Agent Barclay. I'm in the middle of this goddamn thing, and I'm telling you, if you're here, you're going to die. I'm probably already dead. 
So that's out of the way, let's get to the containment procedures. There's really only one. Close the goddamn door. You aren't going to get back through there. You probably already tried. But we know they can get out. If they try hard enough. That's how we found this fucking place. Hopefully you've already done that. I know we did, once we gave up on getting out through here. If you didn't, then you go straight back and get that door closed. That is your only priority right now. You're going to die anyways, might as well do some good before you're gone. Description. So here's a story, tell me if you heard it before. The Foundation gets reports of trouble in bumfuck USA. Cattle and wildlife are dying mysteriously, some people turn up missing. When a body shows up, autopsy finds the heart missing. Not cut out, not torn out, just gone. Empty space in the middle of the chest. They find some sort of pitch black things floating around. Some brain at the Foundation has seen something like them before, figures out how to kill them. Silver bullets and pray to God as you fire, literally, for some reason that makes it work. Doesn't matter which god, but you damn well better mean it. I can't anymore, not after seeing the nest. Anyway, Foundation figures out where it's all coming from. Some house in the middle of bumfuck. No one's lived there in years, not since yada yada, murder, cult, ritual, bullshit. The main thing is, these things keep appearing out the front door. A team goes in and never come back, but then again, neither do the monsters. A sane person would say, good enough, keep an eye on it, kill anything that moves, but this is the Foundation we're talking about. You're a tough agent from Mobile Task Force whatever the fuck. Maybe it's the Quernos. Maybe choir boys like me. You go bust down the door and run inside and that's it. You're fucked. The living room was bad enough. That's where they got O'Brien. They reached in and suddenly he killed over, and one of them took off with his heart in its claws, I guess. They're less distinct here, you probably noticed that. They're like shadows. Stay away from the light. I know that sounds stupid, but think about it. It's the light. Shadows are stronger. They have edges. When it's dark, they're indistinct. They can hardly touch you, and they don't see very well. I think they see by your shadow. I don't know, I'm just pulling at straws here, I'll be honest. You've probably tried going back out the door, but if you haven't, don't. It leads to some place even worse. There aren't any monsters, but Jones went too far from the house and I swear to god he started to melt. Things started popping out of him, and all you need to know is that he didn't make it back. That's when we closed the door. So we started moving through the house. We kept to the light at first, before we wised up. Three of us gone that way, but we got a pretty good picture of our surroundings. This place? It's big. But it's not just the farmhouse, it's like… It's like they stole bits and pieces of a lot of places and stuck them all together. There's some bits that look like an apartment, some that look like a shopping mall, and even what I swear the closet from my old high school. Same patterns on the tiles and everything. There's also bits that are made out of stuff. It's black, like the shadow things, it's mostly in the well-lit places. If the lights go out you can stick your hand through. I don't recommend it. That's how we lost Torres. Something grabbed him, pulled him through. The hole wasn't big enough for his head, but he still went through eventually. So, stay away from the light places, but watch your step when it's dark. Of course, there's no way out. We figured that out, too. Any door you find either just leads to another room in this nut house, or it leads out there, and it's pretty obvious we can't live there. So it's wait till you starve to death, or one of those things gets you. Great bunch of choices, huh? There's one thing you can do. I couldn't go through with it, but maybe you can. It won't help you live, I don't think, but it's… I think it's important. I'm pretty sure someone's gonna have to, or these things are gonna get out eventually. This place is stolen from lots of places, so I'm thinking there has to be other doors. We've closed all the ones we've found, but what if they get opened again, and the Foundation doesn't find them in time? Hell, they don't even know about closing the doors. I'm just hoping they figure out that if someone goes in, the things might stop getting out. And that's assuming everyone's smart enough to close the door after they come in. So I think I figured out a way to stop these things. It's the nest. I only saw it once, for a few minutes. We followed one of the bastards after they got dead in its heart. It took it into a room that I guess is in the middle of this whole place. It's all black stuff and they've dragged in every kind of light they could find, I guess. Lamps, flashlights, candles, you name it. Some of them were carrying more in as we watched. Anyways, at the middle there's a big pile of hearts, just tossed into a heap and torn open. Every one. They threw Denon's heart on the pile and it started to beat, and then pulse, and then thrash around. Then it tore open and one of those things pulled itself out. It shook itself, started to grow, and then right to work. The gross thing is that, torn apart as they were, the hearts kept beating. I swear I felt a twinge in my own chest. There were shadows in the place. I don't mean the monsters, I mean real shadows of people. Only there was no one there to cast them. They were coming from the hearts. A new one appeared at the same time as the hatching monster and started trying to pull away, but it couldn't. 
that was when I ran. I couldn't take it, you understand? I wasn't trained for this kind of shit. I heard the others behind me. I don't know if they were trying to stop me or if the bastards had spotted us, but we got separated. I found a nice, dark closet and I've been hiding in here since. I've been riding my pen light. I turn it off whenever I hear one of them getting close. It's worked so far. I can't go any further. I got a few shots left in my gun, but I can't pray anymore. Not and mean it. Not after I saw the nest, but you? If you found this, you've got to be an agent too. Maybe you're stronger than I was. If you can, go in and destroy the nest. Destroy every last heart. If you do, maybe it'll kill them. That's the only thing I can think of. You'll probably die doing it, but you're dead anyway, so what does it matter to you how it happens? Me? I'm going to try and get this report back to the living room, which I hope is where you found it. Then I'm going to make sure they can't use my heart to make another one of those things. Good luck. Moratori de Salentant. The SCP is presumed to have been neutralized by D-14134, who was posthumously awarded the Foundation Star, one of only two awarded to Class D personnel. Due to information contained in Document 1983-15, it is believed the anomaly was not localized as previously believed, and renewed sources have gone to attempting to locate similar incidents.